Welcome to first course on power systems, module number 10. And in this module, we'll look at transient and dynamic stability in power systems. And just like uh, our other modules, uh, this module is also very tightly connected to our reference textbook. So in this module, uh, first of all, we'll introduce uh, what is uh, transient uh, stability. And then we'll look at its uh, principles and then we can, how we can evaluate in very large systems. And uh, we'll also look at briefly on dynamic stability, what we mean by that. So let's begin with uh, transient stability. In any interconnected power system, uh, thousands of generators are operating in synchronism at all times. And if there is a uh, major fault, let's say, near a generator, uh, one or two generators may go, go out of sync, so to speak, out of synchronism, and uh, uh, they will have to be taken out of the, the grid. Uh, and uh, the transient stability means that uh, they do not have to be taken out. And uh, so utilities have to be constantly watching for that. And uh, there's also something called dynamic stability. If there's not enough damping in the system, the system can go unstable, as we'll see in this module here. So let's look at this uh, problem of transient stability by a very simple system, one machine, infinite bus. So there's an infinite bus here, and uh, there's nothing we can do to change its voltage or frequency, and its uh, internal impedance is zero. So that's what we mean by an infinite bus. And to this bus, we have a... Uh, a generator connected here and uh, through these two transmission lines and a transformer. So here uh, the turbine is supplying this mechanical power and uh, the duration of the phenomenon is so, so short that we can assume that this power coming in is constant. Okay, this P sub M. And if you ignore losses in the system, then uh, the electrical power given out by the generator is the same in steady state as the power that's coming in. Okay. And uh, so the next question is, how do we model uh, our generator for uh, this study? Uh, so what we'll do is we'll assume this constant flux model. So that gives us this impedance, this uh, EMF, E prime, and we'll use uh, uh, transient reactance here. So we saw in the earlier module, module number nine, uh, actually it was module number eight, uh, where we saw how to model synchronous generators for this purpose. So we will model it by this back EMF, E prime, with some angle delta, and uh, then it has uh, this transient reactance, XT prime, and uh, uh, so th that's how we will model it. And in steady state, of course, prior to this fault that we are going to apply, uh, we'll uh, make sure that uh, the power that is being uh, transferred on these lines is what we think it is. So there we have to model it by the synchronous reactance and the EMF back of it. All right. So that was discussed in module number eight. And uh, we'll assume again that uh, this, the duration of this study is uh, so short that uh, the exciter of the generator doesn't have the time to change the, uh, the EMF. So we'll assume this uh, E prime here to be of constant magnitude although this angle delta would, would oscillate. So let me erase this ink here. So <clears throat> uh, you can see that in this system, uh, this uh, <clears throat> power transfer equation would tell us what this uh, uh, power transfer is in this system. It's uh, this EMF, E prime, and uh, this back EMF, V sub B, uh, divided by the total reactance between, the, between these two sources times this uh, sine of the angle delta of this uh, 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 generator, e rotor EMF delta here, okay? Rotor angle. All right. So let's see what happens if we have a fault, for example, on one of these lines here, as shown in this uh, diagram, all right? So we are, we are operating initially uh, before the fault. So we have this pre-fault curve. This one here is the pre-fault uh, uh, power angle curve, 
and, uh, and we are assuming this input power coming in from the turbine to be constant. So we are, we are operating at the intersection of these two curves at this angle delta zero, okay? So now fault occurs. And because of this fault, uh, the voltage is depressed uh, at this bus, and therefore the amount of power that can be transferred during the fault is given by this lower curve in this figure A. And uh, as you can see, uh, what's going to happen is that uh, the generator would accelerate, and as we'll discuss, and then once this fault is cleared, then we go into this post-fault curve because now, well, I shouldn't say fault is cleared, this line is taken out, so, uh, which also means that the fault would be cleared, uh, but uh, the, the main thing for us is the line is taken out. So now the amount of power that can be transferred is given by this post-fault curve over here. And uh, eventually, the, the angle would settle at this intersection of PM and this post-fault curve, which is at this angle delta 1 here. So that's what we'll see in this uh, very simple example that we have in hand. So here, uh, what we do is first we have to understand that if the electromagnetic torque that is being provided by this prime mover and the electrical torque which is opposing it because of the power that this generator is uh, producing, uh, the difference between the two is the acceleration torque and that is acting on the inertia of uh, the system and uh, so we have this equation uh, given here. Well, uh, there are a lot of uh, many steps which are not uh, shown here, but uh, we define a quantity, inertia related quantity uh, for the generator, each generator which is given, and this uh, is uh, given by this expression, and uh, it is uh, in a sort of narrow range. It's somewhere between 11, 3 to 11 seconds for turbo alternators and between 1 to 2 seconds for hydro generators here. Okay, so that's the reason we use this quantity, and then this can be normalized. So it can be normalized uh, based on the generator KVA and the system KVA to which we are going to use for the whole system. So in terms of this quantity H, then this equation here can be written in this form right here, in per unit, okay? So that's what we will be using. So here this angle delta is in electrical radians per second, okay? All right, so here is a very simple example. Uh, example one in our chapter here, which shows that uh, there is a uh, single line to, the three-phase fault rather, I think. Uh, it says somewhere, three-phase fault that occurs on one of these lines over here. And uh, uh, so it, it asks us to calculate this uh, uh, maximum rotor angle swing right here. If the fault is cleared in 40 milliseconds after the faulted transmission line is isolated from by the circuit breakers on both sides here. So these two open up and uh, remove the line and uh, after 40 milliseconds, and we are supposed to calculate what happens to this uh, rotor angle. So that's uh, what is plotted over here. It oscillates and it's a stable thing that it doesn't, uh, uh, you know, go unstable. But uh, this uh, question of stability, we can also understand by using so-called equal area criterion, all right? So th this is uh, uh, useful only in a very simple case like this, but uh, it gives us a very good uh, sort of mental uh, picture of what this stability is all about, and then uh, mathematically, of course, we can apply it to any number of generators that one may have. So again, uh, sti sticking with the same example uh, that we have been talking about, uh, we have this uh, pre-fault curve here. We are plotting the electrical power that this generator can supply as a function of uh, this rotor angle delta, and this P sub M, which is coming in, is constant right here, right? And uh, we model this generator by that simple uh, constant flux model that we talked about earlier, a constant uh, magnitude uh, EMF, 
uh, in series with uh, uh, transient reactants. And uh, <coughs> so this is the post fault curve. And initially, the, the rotor angle had this value delta 0. And then uh, a fault occurs. And during this fault, the, the power angle curve is as shown here. And as you can see, the electrical, uh, the mechanical power coming in is uh, PM right here, given by this dotted, dotted line, whereas the, the power that the generator is supplying is here. So difference between what is coming in and what's uh, going out is this. And uh, since uh, uh, there's more power coming in than going out of the generator, uh, that, that means this system would accelerate. So uh, this area here is represented by uh, this hashed uh, area A. And uh, at, this, at this time uh, at which this angle has reached this value delta cl uh, clearing, delta clearing here, delta CL. So at that time, uh, this line is taken out. Okay, And now we are on this post-fault curve, which is this curve in the middle here. All right. So in this curve, uh, we see that uh, the power that is going out of the generator, electrical power, is greater than the mechanical power that's coming in. So we are on this curve, and you can see that uh, by making use of these equations that uh, by equal area criterion, the angle would swing up to this value delta M, where this area A is equal to area B. So area B is this here. Area A is uh, over here. So A is equal to B. Uh, equating that would give us what this uh, delta max or delta M is, uh, at which uh, the angle would st stop going any further and would oscillate, as we'll see in, in the next slide. Okay, uh, But it's, uh, the point is that it's far away from this uh, angle delta max uh, and we'll see the importance of that delta max later on, uh, but nevertheless, uh, this system is stable as shown here. <clears throat> so, so what is happening is that uh, once again we see that area A is equal to area B. That gives us how far this angle, rotor angle, would swing. And uh, once uh, it has gone to this uh, value, uh, then I think we, we need don't need to worry about. Uh, the during fault curve or even the pre fault curve, because uh, we now have a system where there is only one transmission line. The other transmission line has been taken out. So, uh, so it reaches this angle delta M, and then as you can see here, it will oscillate such that area, if there is no damping, area C is equal to area D over here, and uh, it will oscillate around this angle delta 1. And that's the crossing of the mechanical power that's coming in and the electrical power under post-fault condition that is going out. And just to relate this area C that you see here in the bottom figure to what's on the top, area C is this curve here, uh, not curve, this area. So all the way this, all the way to this point, uh, and this here. So what I, I'm showing here, including this part over here, that's area C represented below here. <clears throat> All right, And without damping, this area C and D are equal. So the, this angle would go all the way from delta M to delta 2 and back to delta M and uh, around this delta 1. <clears throat> All right. So, so the next question is, uh, what is the critical clearing angle? That is, how long uh, can we wait for this fault to be faulted line to be taken out, beyond which this system would have gone unstable? Okay, so that's the the question that we have to answer, and uh, we can answer that question by looking at uh, these uh, curves once again. So what we see here is uh, <coughs> uh, initially. We are operating when the system has no fault under a pre-fault case at this angle delta zero. And uh, then uh, we have uh, this uh, uh, 
uh, fault that occurs. And let's say at, uh, this delta critical is the, the critical time at which uh, the angle has reached this value. And if, if the fault had persisted any longer, the system would have become unstable. So what we are saying is that uh, this area here, designated as area A over here, this area A right here, uh, in order to determine this critical angle, our critical time for clearing of this fault, this angle is equal to, uh, this not rather angle, this area is equal to this area B here, which is uh, given by this bounded by these three curves. Uh, okay, so this area B ha is equal to area A in order to determine uh, what this uh, delta critical has to be. So where is this uh, area B coming from? Well, you see here that uh, this area B is uh, bounded by this angle delta max. And this delta max is important because if the rotor angle uh, goes beyond this, then the, the electrical power that the system can supply under this post-fault condition begins to go down. So, so if I may erase this ink here, you see that uh, prior to this intersection point here, delta max, the electrical power that the the generator is supplying is uh, uh, larger than the mechanical power that's coming in. And therefore, uh, you know, the acceleration torque is actually negative and the rotor angle is, uh, uh, rotor swing is slowing down. But uh, uh, wh what is happening is that uh, beyond this point, if the rotor angle goes, then the electrical power that the generator is supplying becomes less than that coming from the turbine, and therefore the, the rotor angle would begin to accelerate, okay? So now beyond this point, if we reach this point, then uh, uh, we have reached the, st the limit of stability, and this system would go unstable, okay? So that's the reason why in order to determine how much could be this critical clearing angle, which correspond to certain clearing time uh, for this faulted line to be taken out, we can determine this by equating area A with area B using this equal area criterion, okay? So that's uh, what is uh, shown here in this example 11-2. Once again, we have the same system, and uh, uh, the results are shown here in this slide, and uh, it turns out that in this example, the initially, the angle was 22.47 degrees, and uh, uh, the clearing time here is, uh, uh, turn, is uh, 75 degrees, and the maximum angle that we reach is this here. So it, this is a stable system because we do not reach uh, this point over here.